Hey there, Mr. Tush, and we are going to talk about 1.6, which is the rhetorical appeals, kind of a synthesis activity. When you do the test, you're actually going to have to do a lot of things with synthesis, which is the idea of making two ideas work together. Um, and we're going to talk about combining the three things we just talked about in 1.5 ethos, logos, and pathos. I don't have another slideshow, and this is not a very long lecture. It's really more an assignment overview. When you read the assignment this time, I'm going to want you to read from roughly this page, which is combining ethos, logos, and pathos. Let me see if this will give me the ability to get out of this or not. Um, so combining ethos, logo, logos, and pathos right here. And I'm going to want you to read including this letter to Thomas Jefferson by Benjamin Banneker. And ben, ben, Benjamin Banneker was interesting because he's the son of former slaves, which means he's an African-American in the 1780s, 1790s. Um, and so this is right after America won its freedom um, while they were going through the process of making the Constitution, which obviously Jefferson was very much involved in. And he is one of the authors of the Declaration of Independence, remember, Jefferson was. And um, Banneker was self-educated. And when you think about a man who educated himself at a time when we just had books, um, he writes at an extraordinarily high level. Um, and he's really quite a, a, quite a rhetorician. Um, his writing is extraordinary. And he makes an argument to Thomas Jefferson uh, about, hey, you're writing the Constitution. Can we maybe write slavery out of the American existence? Uh, and, the, and he wrote it in 1791. And he appeals to ethos and pathos and logos. And as you read it, you're going to see that. You're going to get some analysis on this, too, afterwards. And then I'm going to take you, so just read through that. I want you to understand that. And then you're going to get down to this. And you're going to select one of the following rhetorical situations. And I've given you 10 of them, okay? And you're going to discuss how you will establish your ethos and appeal to logos and pathos. So you're going to tell me what your situation is and then explore why, how you're going to do each of those three and then explain why emphasizing one of them would be more appropriate to the situation you've chosen. Okay, so those are the three things you're going to do. And it's a little bit more complicated, but you're going to pick one of these ten. You don't have to pick all ten, just one. All right. So when you go to the assignment, which is right here, you're going to read the synthesis activity which is this on page 22. That's this right here. This is the synthesis activity on page 22. And you're going to say your specific scenario. How would you establish ethos? And if you forgot, go check 1.5 on what ethos is. How would you appeal to logos? How would you appeal to their logic? And then how would you appeal to their emotions or their values, pathos? And then which one of them do you think is the most important to put emphasis on and why? I'm going to appeal to all three, but I'm really going to lay in on logos because my audience is blah, blah, blah. Or I'm going to really appeal to pathos because my audience is blah, blah, blah. Whatever you're going to do, pick that. Fill that out. Make sure that you copy the specific scenario. So whichever one of these 10 you pick, copy it and the PDF should be copyable. It should also be copyable in Perusal and paste it. By the way, I have created perusal, um, uh, perusal accounts for all three classes. There's, this, there's three classes for everyone. Perusal is essentially a reading platform. And I, rinse, I answered that in the Q&A. And I've actually asked all the Lang and Comp kids to join their cohort in uh, AP Lang uh, in perusal. And I made the first 17 pages of this an optional assignment. I don't expect you to go in and make comments, although you certainly can. I don't expect you to have to go in there and, and do massive amounts of meditation. But if you like to, you can. And you can annotate for each other. You can make this socially. You can connect for each other. Um, but my point behind telling you to do that is it's a place to read it. If the PDF is not reading cleanly for you, and I heard from some kids that the PDF was not reading cleanly, I created the perusal because I know perusal works smoothly on the Chromebooks. So go to Perusal, and that'll allow you to read um, the textbook. Once you get there, you go there, you open it up, and this is the same textbook. And you're gonna, you know, drop into oh, 17 pages down. It's way the heck down here. Hang on, it's coming in. Um, this is from 1.5. It's coming in. Here we go. Combining this is 1.6, where it's the Benjamin Banneker and all the Benjamin Banneker, and yes, well. 
it's not necessarily oh it is allowing you to do some of it and it's not to allow you to do a lot of commenting on this i'm sorry about that um and then when you get to the end here are your activities so you can take a look at the activities we'll do the visual texts another time they're kind of neat and they're a fun thing to do um, that i'll assign at the end of the week i hope that helps enjoy thanks for uh, for watching